This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. My first blowjob was a double blowjob. I like doing porn. I like having sex. Um, and I like having sex for money. It's the best of both worlds. You can put it together. But my my ex-boyfriends, are very, they always end up being like, porn addicts and they like me with multiple men it's quite a strange quite a strange thing but they won't admit that at the beginning then they always join me only fans after that's fucking creepy like, isn't it <gasps> what happens if he's an ugly bastard oh fuck loads of those what's the most men you've had in a day in a day um hold on let me just think I've not done anything obscene I think four yeah, that's not offensive, is it? <laughs> You're like amateur. <laughs> fucking kid on four. Hold on, let me make sure. Oh no, no, it's not ten. Me, Sophie, and Rebecca How did some. Fuck, can you get four and ten mixed up? Are you oh. bisexual yourself? No, I'm gay for pay. Boom, we're on. We're on. That's we're nice on. and fast, Did quick and easy. <laughs> today's guest, we've got porn stars here in a day. How so are you? Cold. How was the drive? How was the journey? Do you know what it is? It's actually gorgeous. Like the scenery when you're going up all the snow mm. and it's a little bit of a uh, sunset, I think. So, porn so, star, yeah. only fans, porn all star. the mad stuff. Everything. I just, I just said that, <laughs> a porn star on last week as well, Brooklyn Blue. Like, mad, I know, mad she story. lives so close to me, you know. Do you know her? I don't know her, like I was just saying, even before they started, me, her and her husband were going to have a little get-together, but just sometimes hard to work things out and, you know, mm-hmm. get the content sorted. Before we get into all the nitty-gritty, I always go back to the start of my guests, where you grew up and how it all began. So, from Darlington, um, quite a small town, it's very quiet, very good girl, until I got a little bit older, then I think I went a little bit off the rails. Um, yeah, not much to say about growing up. What age? What age? What was the age to go off the rails? I would say it's quite late, you know, about 15. That's young. Do you know what it is? I'll tell you what it was. I was very quiet. I was really shy. And I sat going Thai boxing lessons. And that... <laughs> my first blowjob was a, a double blowjob with two guys from the Thai boxing. So I went there, obviously. It's very male heavy, isn't it? I mean, they were my age. They weren't older. Um, and I got I got on with these two guys there. And we were quite young. We were like, you know, 15 or whatever. And we were just kind of experiment. They were like, go on, why don't you give it a little suck? And this was like behind the session afterwards. And so, yeah, I mean, it wasn't wasn't full escapade, shall we say, but just a little. And I think that was it from then. I was a bit like, ooh, tension, I like this. You enjoyed that? Well, yeah. I hope them two guys are doing well now. <laughs> I do one, you can do two, are not And then, yeah, so obviously then that, and then you start getting a little bit wilder, don't you? A little bit more promiscuous, the teen years. How was parents? I don't see much of my dad, but I do know him. Um, Mum, yeah, she's fine. She's good. Mm-hmm. They weren't ideal when I started porn. She actually got a letter through the door when I first started. Because I was such like, a good girl growing up, I was, you know, very quiet, up to no trouble. Um, I mean, this was back in 2013 when I started. So the, the type just like full on blackmail style, like you see in the movies, with a, with a, <laughs> a photo of me, like a little stick insect on, like, on top of the biggest cock you've ever seen reverse cowgirl look at your little angel now look what she's up to oh, mortified who does that 
So somebody saying that to yeah. your mum? posted it. I'd already told them. I first had them from LA. Hi, I decided to do porn. What age did you get into porn? I was, I decided age 21, but I got into it age 22. So I did a little thought process behind it. What's your thought process behind going to porn? Well, as I say, I was doing religious studies at uni. I don't know if you know that. So no. I was at a Catholic uni, um, Leeds Trinity. And I was just really promiscuous. And an ex-boyfriend was like, listen, you need to calm yourself down. Um, so I went through a little bit of sex therapy. I wasn't really a fan of that. And I thought, do you know what it is? I feel like I could monetize this slutty behavior. Can't just be sleeping my way around and being doing this, that and the other. So I thought, do you know what? I bet you could get money out of it. And the idea of porn can be quite glamorous, can't it? I mean, there's, a, there's two sides to it. I've had a very privileged experience. So mine's been all good. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to look into it. Also, I was at uni. I didn't like buying the cheap bread and the cheap Coca-Cola and all that stuff. I've always quite liked material things. So I um I decided to do a little bit of research. So I just Googled how to be a porn star because I had no clue. I had no experience. I didn't watch porn. I didn't do anything like that. And everything was um everything I could find was USA based. And I read this book by this girl. It was um, Jenny Flame, a porn name was. It was actually quite a sad book, but it, it gave me a lot of experience and like how to charge the different rates, the different levels you can do. Um, and then I found this YouTube, YouTube um, interview with this agency. So I was like, amazing, I'm going to message these. So I messaged this agency and I was like, hello, um, I'm UK based. Would you represent me? They went, listen, get your visa, get this sorted give us your stats, we'll have a Skype call with you and yeah, get yourself over, where we go. So I was like, amazing. So I had to get these um, photographs taken and I met this guy and this guy said to me, how crazy is this? This guy goes to me, listen, you should film your own first porno so if you ever get like famous, you can sell it on DVD. Obviously like OnlyFans wasn't around then so I was like, great idea. So I was like, do you know anyone I can film a porno with? Um, I had my flights booked and that, so from Heathrow, and I hired this um, videographer, One Eye Jack, he's called. <laughs> and this guy, he was actually from Newcastle as well, but I'd never done porn, so I didn't realise he needed an STI test, so I did it with a condom. Um, and then, yeah, we did that just before I flew to LA. So all these years later, when OnlyFans is about, I've got my own first porn out of cell. What about <laughs> this, the sex therapy stuff? What was that? That was in Leeds. That was just very brief. Bit of an older woman. Yeah. What age were you? I was mean about 20. Why did you go there? Um, I was just a little bit promiscuous and I was with an ex-boyfriend. He was like, I think you've got a problem. You're very sexual. You've done a bit of a few questionable things. Um, <laughs> I think right now you just might have been... Gay. <laughs> gaslighting me a bit. <laughs> Get a porn. Um, so, yeah. So, 21 then, you start... Was it an enjoyment for for it are we just trying to make money from it no like? i do i enjoy it i like doing porn i like having sex um and i like having sex for money it's the best of both worlds you can put it together but it's very hard to explain to a civilian because that's what we call non-porn performers it's it's not like if me and you had sex now it would be a completely different experience to me going having sex with a co-worker it's a performance you, you don't really you, obviously you're having fun and you're having a nice time but there's that's actually the last thing you're thinking about is your own personal enjoyment. You're thinking, does this look good? Does this angle look good? Is the, Am I providing the right kind of character for what this porn movie wants? Because of my look, I'm a very versatile performer. No tattoos, blonde boobs, not really overly plastic surgery. So I've done a lot of different types of porn. I've done lots of... Um, like nice porn, shall we call it? Like the nice, the vanilla stuff, vanilla stuff. And then I've done um, the hardcore stuff. And then I'm, I'm going to call it some miscellaneous strange porn. So I've done like all different varies of it. What's the worst one? Or did you enjoy them all? The, do you know what it is, right? The worst one, I've only cried on set once and I was raging. I, I hated it. I had to walk out. You're going to laugh. It was so fucking boring and so long and so painful. It was cinematic erotica. No gagging, no spitting, no hard got very sensual, very soft touching. Don't be porn star. It, I was on set for 20 hours and they sprayed you with this water. Don't get me wrong, the stuff comes out so fucking beautiful to look at. And um, 
it was the guys I get artists and it was just long it was tiring it's exhausting it's like having one minute of really slow sex for 20 hours and I was just like I'm not doing this but if I didn't finish it the whole movie would have been fucked so I finished it 20 hours and I was like I'm never working for you again have you ever been in love? not on a porn set but I would say yeah have you? yeah what did the boyfriend say? Oh, he was a porn addict and a lunatic my my ex boyfriends are very they always end up being like porn addicts and they like me with multiple men. It's quite a strange, quite a strange thing. But they won't admit that at the beginning. Then they always join me only fans after. That's fucking creepy, like, isn't it? I yeah, they're like, you look good with this black cock. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> do they um do you think that's the only people that can love you who under, not understands it, but is kinda of infatuated with that lifestyle? I think growing up, obviously I've had a very toxic male role model. So I'm attracted in that type of man. Because I know girls in the industry that have very loving husbands, very healthy relationships. So I think I'm attracting a certain type of guy and they're attracted to the fantasy. And then, but then when they get to know you and they see you've got like a softer side, a nicer side, and you've got like your other personality, then they get, they have conflicted issues as well. They're kind of like, hold on a second. I don't know. They're feeling protective over this nice side of you, but then turned on and into this other side of you. It's quite a strange dynamic. I struggle with relationships. But like attracts like. You're a mad bastard as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think I'm what? a bit mad as well. Yeah, I yeah. like toxic men. I love them. <laughs> so bad. I don't want to get help with it just yet, though. A few more yeah. years of some toxic maniacs. There's plenty out there for you anyway. Hit me up. Get me Instagram. Uh, <laughs> see when you've done your first, uh, your first porn all that. Were you nervous or were you excited? Was I bloody hell? I was nervous to have a clue what I was doing. So I'd, I'd done as much experience as I could, right? Oh my God. It was like, I, I do pole dance now, so now I can like move a little bit. But back then I hadn't, I was rigid. And um, it's my first ever porn shoot. There's like a good director and a bad director, good director, bad cop type of thing. And they go, we want you to dance for us. And I'm thinking, what? I did not sign up for this. And this guy's like, dance, move your hips, do something. Meanwhile, we're going to have sex on this motorbike. The guy, I can't remember his name now, was just getting himself hard in the corner using copious amounts of coconut oil. So I'm thinking, what on earth is going on? What have I signed up to? This is madness. But then after that, and it was done, you're like, oh, actually, that wasn't as bad. It's just more like stage fright, I guess, on nerves. And I'd never been on set with that many people. You had lights, you had the boom, you know, you had a guy telling you to dance, you had a guy wanking in the corner with coconut oil, you had a fucking motorbike, you got a mount. Do you ever look around sometimes and think, what the fuck, what if I chose here in life? Yes, listen, sometimes I sit there and think, what the fuck has gone on here? <laughs> Why am I naked on the internet? Mm. And I, I'm not going to lie, I've done some questionable pornos. What's the worst one? Oh, you're going to die here. Necrophilia. I pretended to be dead. Oh, you can't do that. Grandpa does teens. <laughs> Another one. How old? I mean, I wasn't a teen. Um, they just labelled it that. I was like 24. But the the other one, yeah, that was in LA. I was about 23. They were like, listen, we give you double. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't, it wasn't bad on set. He, God, he was, um, I don't know. He was Hungarian. He couldn't speak a word of fucking English. I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, <laughs> you had nice blue eyes. <laughs> Got to focus on the good point. See, when you're doing ones like that, is that just for the money or for the the thrill of it or oh that was just, just for the money that one like sometimes I'll go away don't get me wrong I would never do something I was really uncomfortable with even that one that I said where I had to play dead even that one they treat you very well on set and it's it's all very like professional and okay I'd never do something that was like you know I thought, didn't feel comfortable with I don't do amateur guys for camera well I do now for my only fans but I didn't learn mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny because years ago, you'd be like, I'm not doing content. That guy just wants a free blowjob, a free shag, blah, blah, blah. And I would say, the opposite way right around. It's like, want to do content. So if somebody just phones or messages, you want to do content, there's money there. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't do that. They'd go through agent. It had to be big production, Dorsel, Brasses, Digital Playground, mm -hmm. Fake Taxi. It would never, if a guy was like, hello, um, I do, I don't know, hornyjack.com. Do you want to be on my site? I would like, absolutely not. What did your mum say? Well, before she found out, everyone would find out. My mum had been very young, so she was a fairly young parent herself. She was probably like growing up the same time as me, really. She had me like 18. So at first she was like, oh, whatever makes you happy. You must just be thinking, oh, she's just gone through a little thing. Then she realised everyone would find out. And she was like, what the fuck? 
you're just screwing the name, but they're all right now. Would it's just the norm it? now. It's ten years. That's a long time. I can't look as well. How many porn have you done? Um, well, funnily, because I'm applying for that visa, I've had to look into things recently, and I've done a hell of a lot. I've probably done 150 actual like credited movies on the IM. Is it IMDb? IMDb. Mm, IMDb. Yeah, on that page, and then I've done like all the all the ones like after that, the little stock and fillers, shall we call them, that aren't really seen as actual movies. They're just pornos. Because mm -hmm. some of the pornos, you know, you get a script on that. Hate them. What about the amateur <laughs> stuff? I didn't used to do a lot of that. I do more of that now. Well, not amateur. Amateur for myself and a content creator. Like I say, I'm not just going to do mm -hmm. it with... Do you think it's more accepted now, though? Back in the day, it was kind of frowned upon. People going, yeah, oh, it's still the I'm fucking quite... women next door now doing OnlyFans. Do you know it, what I mean? It's so mad because you go do fake taxi with John, who's a man of a certain age, who was who's the same type of caliber as a man that's asking you, but they don't have the following, the status, the you know, there's something that's going to build your career. Everything's a career move, really. Why is a fake taxi so popular? That's like kind of stepping stone in it for every porn star in the UK. So many fake taxis. Is there? Uh, yeah. I thought there was only one. But they do it in Prague as well now. I think I've done seven. So how many times they got me in that taxi? Bloody hell, how many times I forget my purse? <laughs> <laughs> we got we got even got engaged in one you of them. You think you're a fucking taxi driver the amount of ones you've done? I know, maybe I need to be the uh, female one, female what driver. Was, uh, fake taxi like the first time you've done it? That's quite amateurish, is it not? Yeah, that's the vibe, so... But it's got a hell of a following and it's a really good thing to get your like name out. Yeah, it was fine. It was all right. It was in London somewhere. I can't remember the first one. There ain't that many. Does, it's it just become, does it just become the norm now, just going to job to job and knowing what you're going to do? Yeah. It, it, it's mad when you first do it because it, it's such a strange experience. You walk into a set, you won't know anyone. You're like, hello, I'm so-and-so, so-and-so. You're fully clothed. You know, you might not have your makeup done or whatever. And then within an hour, you know, you're upside down with a cock in your mouth <laughs> as you do just a normal day isn't it? in um in prague i did this mad porno it's called box truck and um the concept is you park your truck on the street and you can see into it no you can see out of the truck so you can see everyone go past they can't see in but it looks like you can that was a mental one to do and i hated the guy I didn't find him sexy but i always give someone the benefit of the doubt i'll work with them once see if we've got the chemistry if not no list um and he was just a little trog and um and the people you're working for they were just unprofessional a bit demanding it was quite poorly orchestrated and um at the end of it there was me and another girl on set that day and this was in prague so anyway I'm, get this scene done even though i'm not enjoying it but i'm thinking listen be professional get it done it's okay make it look nice <laughs> get the payment it's in bloody check currency so anyway whatever take it go back oh my god they got mine the girls payments mixed up and i had a heart your ears <laughs> i was like ring the urgent like what the fuck what happens if he's an ugly bastard oh fuck loads of those no do you know what it is right when you're doing porn it's not about the looks and you'll know this yourself from do you watch porn used to i don't anymore, do not anymore? Oh, genuinely because it can be quite it's addictive damaged, can't it's it? yeah. to the brain eh? my daughter, apparently. So, it darkens the brain. You might, not have, you might not have watched the most prettiest porn girls, but you might have watched a porn star that you really liked or a certain genre or whatever. So it's the same. When you're going and doing porn with a guy, um, he might not be the best looking guy, but if he's got a certain energy or character about him or he's got a certain status, um, then yeah, you'll have a really good scene and energy together. But you could work with a guy that looks like an absolute gorgeous stud and you might not be able to get it up. What's the most of your genres in the porn industry? Um, I think it depends actually on which country and where you're looking from. MILF, MILF's one of the biggest ones. People are now loving um, like TikTok girls or OnlyFans girls, natural boobs, big boobs. Just, it, go, it goes through phases really. What's the worst thing you've ever been asked to do? Scat. I won't do that. Not in it that the slightest. Eating your own shite? Or anyone's. I don't do things like that. I don't like things like that and I block anyone that does things like that. Yeah, I've had some dominatrix on, man, and the shit that they've mm. done. And Absolutely. I don't find that sexy. I've got to still find it sexy to a degree. Um, I like hardcore stuff. I'll do anal, I'll do DP. 100% I'm not doing anything to do with that. What do you enjoy the most? I like one-on-one, um, -on -one, me and a boy, pussy or anal, or DP's all right as well. It's just standard, isn't it? Yeah. 
That's the best type. You've got the most chemistry. You can get the strongest scene. Who have you had the most chemistry with? Um, I think my favourite guy to date would be Maximo Garcia. Where's he from? Spain. He's going to be... He's, he sounds well, like he, a porn star, doesn't he? Yeah, he does sound like a porn star. But yeah, he's, he's just great at what he does. He looks the part. He's big. He's jacked. He gets his dick up. He shags like you'd think a porn star would shag. But then there's loads good. Manuel Ferreira, he was good. Danny D, he's great. Yeah, like Danny. Really. Dan, I'm going to get yeah. Danny on. He's messy. Oh, you love things. Danny. Danny's good fun. Yeah, I always have so much fun on set with him. Yeah. Because so, when you're not having sex, it's not like you're flirting and grabbing each other. You'll just be like messing on, really. He's silly. Do you think you get worse as you've got into porn or do you think it's actually calmed you down? 100% calm you down. Do you know what happens? You start it. You start doing like... I think Brooklyn actually mentioned to you like porn, there's levels you do and you save certain things like anal and DP to get more money out of it and create a longer career. So I did it differently too. I've, I've done these things and there's no right or wrong way to do it. But I did, um, first year did vaginal, second year I started doing my first anal, then I went into DP, then I went into like gangbang, then I did like another genre. Um, but I did it because I got offered it for a movie called Dorsel and it was a really big movie and it got me like nominated for AVN Award. So that's how I did it. But basically, once you've got all those stuff done and you've got your your categories boxed off, you then got them, you can try all these fantasies, if you like, all these different things you would never have tried. Like if I hadn't done porn, I'm probably not going to have gone and slept with like, got whipped down the street in Madrid, you know what I mean? For a kink.com scene or I might not have had like, God knows how many guys at a time or I might not have tried double in or but then what happens is you try all these things and you realise the best kind of sex is one-on-one -on -one chemistry and now I've I'd only watched a lot of porn but I like imagine in my head and now that things that turns me on the most <laughs> is like kissing and foreplay the idea of like little silky dresses uh -huh. and hands going up and it's mad because I've done all this crazy stuff but it's different for the consumer you, you get harder and harder until you start liking mad and crazy stuff to get yourself off mm -hmm. so seeing you you first was it enjoyment at first and then it just becomes you, not... you still enjoy it don't get me wrong that's why i want to go and and do more this year because it's it's like a sense of achievement to know you've created a good product that people are gonna i know it sounds daft because people are just fucking wanking to it do you know what i mean it's wanking there it's hardly gonna be a noble prize but it's nice when you go it's when you get nominated for the award and you know you've created a good movie and you know you're recognized within your industry and the better companies you work for um i know say jules jordan blacked digital playground the better type of performer you have and the the more chemistry and the better the scene is what's the most men you've had in a day in a day um hold on let me just think i've not done anything obscene I think four. Yeah. That's, that's not offensive, is it? <laughs> You're like amateur. <laughs> fucking kid on four. Hold on, let me make sure. Oh, no, no, it's not ten. Me, Sophie, and Rebecca How did something. How the fuck can you get four and ten mixed up? Because... Don't hold it back in this podcast. <laughs> because Rebecca and Sophie and I did something for OnlyFans, but for actual porn, the most is four, I think. I'm going to have a fan say to me, no, it's not. You did this, this, this. Sophie. Legal porno. Yeah, Sophie. She's a mad bastard. Yeah, she's wild. She's got a gold, though. Oh, but the best. Yeah, but nice person. Like, like I say, it's, people can judge and make, can make assumptions, yeah. but she's still got a kind heart, kind soul, yeah, man. But everyone's up for everyone, and you know, you just got to accept that. Oh, I had a video on TikTok the other day. Bloody TikTok. on TikTok. Yeah. They're vicious on there. I, I troll them back sometimes. I'll go back on their profile and troll them back. I'm like, don't do this, it's negative. Mm -hmm. So what happened is I was wearing these ribbed leggings and uh, they're seamless. And it was just a daft video of me and Rebecca in the wheelchair. And like, I put my leg up and they put these comments. I'm thinking, first I didn't get it. I was like, what does this mean? This is when I realised how bloody perverted men are. The leggings look right. <laughs> like I've got a a massive vagina, shall we say, because the way they're like, I lift my leg up and it creaked a crease. Obviously, anyone with common sense would know that um, it'd be impossible for to hang that low, wouldn't even be able to sit there. But I was thinking, oh my God, the views and comments, everyone was like, there's a clam. I was thinking, oh, for all the videos for people mm. starting to view and go viral, it had to be this one. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> views, well. views bring money, doesn't it? Just brings content for it, just brings people to Well, luckily, general. I've had um, a designer vagina done, so that's all right. So I know that's not the case. How much and was that? 
Well, it was only three and a half grand. And I what? only got the outside done, not the inside. I asked him to check and do you know how he checked? Yeah. Stuck a finger in and went, it's all good. Sure it was a dog. <laughs> Backstreet. Oh, it's a very good that? reputation. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the, that, the, what do you call that? Design a vagina. What is the design of a vagina? They just, well, what they do is they give you a little trim or they do what you want to your lips. You might want them a little bit, you know, tucked in. You might want a little reduction. You might want it off. They took the fat from my thighs and put it into the lips to give it what's called a cheeseburger effect. So a bit more of a rejuvenated look. How do you keep it? Trying, yeah, if it's been <laughs> fucking just... hammered for years. <laughs> if you think about it right, when you're doing porn, there's actually not a lot of porn guys. You've been working with a lot of the same guys over and over again. So when I was doing a lot of porn, I was actually only sleeping with the same five men over and over again all year round. And I'd only be doing no more than like maybe a couple of weeks or maybe I'd go do four porn scenes in a week and have three weeks off. It's no more than having regular sex with a husband of 10 years daily. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're not doing it ten, every, daily for 10 years. Yeah, for once a week. For but um, Yeah, there's ways to look after yourself. You can put little, um, you like you get little sachet things you can put up to prevent things like BV. Girls can get a thing called BVs when your pH balance gets knocked off. Don't know. Yeah, you probably won't know about that. No. Um, what else? Yeah. So how, how do you see the people in the industry? Because I've had many porn stars on the dominatrix some of their heads are fried some of them are like Rebecca man like uh, Brooklyn spot on she seemed quite on yeah. the path man quite on the ball like comes from a good family home like you know yourself usual usual suspects the father not there the daddy issues yeah. starts off stripper starts off escort and fucking porn and then it's only fans it's, it's all the same kind of levels to it that yeah. like do you see that a lot of broken souls listen there's <laughs> There's also, like every industry, there's privilege. Certain people are privileged and they're going to have a better experience. You know, mm. if you're a gorgeous looking girl, you're probably going to have a better experience. If you're of a certain look, you're going to get a better experience. If you're from a better background where you can afford to get give yourself a better start, you're going to have a better experience. If you don't struggle with addiction and things like that, you're going to have a better experience. But every everyone's different. No one person's... I can say I've had a happy, positive experience. I treat it as a business. I've made good money. I still make good money. I can continue to make good money. Some people, they might necessarily, they, that doesn't mean they're not working as hard as me and they could be nowhere near achieving what I am financially or, you know, as an sense of mm -hmm. achievement just because it's also a little bit of luck, hard work and talent, isn't it? Why do you think it gets such a bad rate? Why do porn stars kind of, I wouldn't say hated on, but... I said, men love it. Men, like, even when the comments, even when I put the cut of Brooklyn out, like, it's just all men feel like hate and rage. to slag straight away. <laughs> why like, why is it, is it, do you think it's such a bad rep? There's different ways of people thinking. And if a person thinks that way, no matter how many times you show them a different side to it, that's going to be their thought process, whether that's because that's what they've been taught through their whole life, whether that's their genuine like how they feel in their soul about something like for instance it's it's kind of like do you know some people are racist and no matter how much you educate them they're never not going to be a racist even though you can try and try and try i just think some people hate women um it's more women they hate isn't it men don't get as much grief in porn but they hate women making money off sexual exploitation when men have been doing it for years how do people treat you when you're out and stuff if they know who you are they're, they're creepy <laughs> so me and my friend were out over Christmas, right? And she was met this guy she'd been seeing and his pal was there. And I thought, no, oh. I'd only had one drink and I could see he recognised me. And I just, I didn't really want to chat because you're out, you don't really want to always chat about it. But I will like be, be pleasant and stuff. Obviously, you don't want to come across a cunt. But he was like just slowly standing more and more towards me. And I thought, I'm going to kill her. She's told him what I do to try and like sweeten him up. No, she fucking hadn't. He recognised me off fake taxi. <laughs> So, yeah, but usually they're fine, you know, they're really nice. I met one day over Christmas, I was having selfies and shots with him and stayed out with him for a little bit, a little fan. You know, off the sound, one seen me in Space Ibiza one time, can you imagine the clip I looked? He's like, can we have a selfie? I was like, yes. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> is it? But the raw sound, you know, I don't, I don't get a lot of hate. And if I do, it's like online hate. Yeah, you never get hate. But sometimes person. you reply to them, they're like, oh, I'm only joking. They just want attention back. Yeah. I think they want love, some of them. People are weird, don't they? Yeah, they are. Because then, then they'll be like, 
they're buzzing. You've te you've, you've replied to them, mm -hmm. and they follow you. You do OnlyFans as well now. Yeah. What sort of fetishes and that weird shit people into on that feet pictures and shit? What is it? What is it with feet? One loves my belly button. What is that? I don't know. But feet's normal. Feet's a very normal fetish. Well, why is that? Oh, Lord, man, I love sucking your toes. I see people always posting stuff in their stories with their DMs are like. One of thinking. my exes used to love wanking off and just sniffing my foot. He would come to sniffing my feet. But yeah, I've got a guy that loves me to vacuum like this, get a dildo and fuck my own belly button and go, you're fucking me so good, you're stabbing me in the belly. He's mad. And he sends me these mental videos. I can only do them when I'm quite slim because he likes the ribs and stuff short. I'll show you some of the photos afterwards because he'd be like, what the hell? What do you think though? Does that make you question men? <laughs> no, it's it's just a fantasy to fetish. It's just something in his brain that's making his like cock tingle. He's not a weirdo. He's probably just sat fine on his own thinking, oh, that belly button's horny. Yeah, no, that's weird. <laughs> that's fucking... You're not in the belly buttons. Oh, really, man? What? I mean... They say it's to their own. They're not harming anybody. They're not doing any bad. And just because As long it's as not... I mentioned kids, animals, yeah. I'll tell you what did happen, actually. I was very, very upset about this. Very upset about this. I had a really great relationship with a guy I did my first anal with. Um, did my first DP with him. Really cool guy. I liked him. He got into drugs. Um, and he started getting into... He started enjoying bestiality. He sent me a video of my breed of dog doing something to a woman in some block. I don't care how long we've been friends for. Don't even send me that shit. Horrible. That a question. Why the fuck is that? My breed as well. Yeah, that's fucking... How would you do that? You should be in the jail. The kind. Peanut butter, my breed of dog and a woman. All I'm saying is block, block, block everywhere. He, he needs locking up. He's yeah, a Columbia now. he needs his... His balls kicked, man. Oh, it's not right, that is it? I think that's twisted in the head, though. He's purposely hunted my Weimarana. And he's got a girl to do something with it? No, it's just a video he's found on the internet and then sent it to me. Like, what did he think I was going to be like? Thank you. It's very strange. Do you think people will try and test you as well to see how far you will go? N no one on this planet in this industry would dare ask me to do anything like that. I mean... Even the the mad stuff I've done, like one guy's asked me to do things like show my fillings off. I've got them all changed to white now, so that can't be happening. And um, walk around with a peg leg, one heel on, masturbate my clit with an iron, not turned on. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> this mad stuff like that, but yeah, things that, like that. that like, when I'm younger, been... I'm a bit like, well, why not? That that cheese iron? burger would have been melted <laughs> if it was fucking on. <laughs> I know, but even though you know it's not on, no, you don't. You don't feel quite comfortable doing that. I was like, it's a bit weird. This. I don't like bondage. I've walked off a bondage set. Hate being restrained or tied up. Very claustrophobic. It's a mad industry, but on it. Yeah, but do you know that 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 dead scene I was telling you about? Yeah. They make you fake pee yourself, but that wasn't some. I, I drew the line there. For some reason, I mean, I was twenty four. I don't know what was going through my head to even do that. But you're so young. That's the problem. You shouldn't allow to do porn too young. I will say that because you you haven't had. You don't have the intelligence, no matter how intelligent you are, or the experience in the industry to know what you're saying yes or no to, really. You're just like, you think, oh, yeah, I'll do that. It's good money. They're a nice person to me. I'm going to go do that. When you think about it, it wasn't until years later a guy tweeted a picture of me in the scene saying, I loved you in this, and I thought, I'm meant to be dead. This is weird. Blocked him. Mm -hmm. So you're meant to be getting fucked a dead body, basically? I was the dead body. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, so we did, I, did, I did a couple of them. I had to take a fake ecstasy pill, obviously. The guy I did it with was a really nice guy. He was actually the nice director from the first ever scene I did. So there is elements like this where you think, when I look back now, he's a questionable character, isn't he? Maybe a little bit of a groomer, but you don't see that at the time. But what's the sound? The sound is fuck. Mm. So we had to take these fake ecstasy tablets and I die overdose and then what you have to do is you have to stay in the position you died I died like this eyes open mouth anyway I have to lay like that for the full 20 minutes absolute fucking torture don't do it with your eyes open if you ever do it he spunks he's a shooter it lands on the roof of my mouth I can't move <laughs> imagine being shot there with spunk and not being able to like bat an eye I was like this oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we've done ones where they're like strangulation and um, what they give you is they, they give you this gum to really chew to make you look like you're frothing out the mouth. It's fucked up, you know, really fucked up. And we do this like choking strangulation scenes where the guy's murdering you 
And they use like special effects makeup on that. If you ask me to do that now, I'll be like, no fucking way, out your head, not a chance. 24, double P, I'm like, passes the gum, give us the rope. Check a lot of the directors are loving their own fantasies. He, d- he died and set that man, had a heart attack. He was, oh. he was such a sweetheart. I don't know, but that site was so dark, you have to know, you can't get it on Google, you have to know the exact link to put it in. Kind of that way. But, but my agent at the time didn't say, listen, this is an extremely taboo site, you need to kind of think about what you're agreeing to. It's like, do you want to do the sea? They kind of like make it seem a little bit like, do you want to do the sea? It's better money, it's a little bit like taboo, but it's like, they don't. Re- you're not kind of thinking. By the way, the man mess- the man, man masturbate, masturbate to this are going to be turned on, on seeing you dead. If they said that to you, you'd probably be like, oh. Even though common sense, you, you don't think like that because you're getting so many jobs through. You're mm. getting milking table, you know, then if the table milking a cock one day and then you're playing dead the next. Fucking mad, isn't it? It's mad. It, honestly, I think of some of the things I'm thinking, would, nah, you have lost the plot, I think. <laughs> would you, you, I think you have got to have lost the plot, but I think everybody's lost the plot. Like, yeah, but you, then you grow older like this and now I can think, right... I'm lucky I'm you know I think I'm alright from it I don't think I've got too damaged I'm turned on by kiss now <laughs> do you think a lot of uh, can, can a lot of the stuff you've done in the past come back and bite you now so is it just kind of she's a porn star and she can get away with it listen I've not done anything illegal I've done I tell you what does come back to bite you in the ass. ugly fucking photographs that's the worst thing for me they'll tweet you you look stunning here I'm like oh my holy hell no I do not and then um, this 2016, I gained a little bit of weight. I mean, I wasn't big. I was a size 10 at best. Porn, porn old guy goes to me, can you suck it in? But those photos from that year. But men love it sometimes with a bit of weight on you. Yeah, men love it. I'm slim because I like working out and training. It's not because I feel pressured to look that way. Although you do you do get pressure. Like, pussy, minute big asses are in. I don't have a big ass. Is there a cut-off point for you where... You're going to get out of it or you're going to struggle to get out? When I first started, I was like, five years, I'm out. Then like another year, you're like, mm, maybe you could another couple of years. I'm having fun. I'm making money. It gets to this point. I'm 10 years deep. I'm not doing another job after this. So now all my money's going into making sure I will have an income when I stop shooting so I don't have to do a job again. Because what's the point in doing all this if I'm then going and doing a lip blush course? No offence to the girls that do that, but that's not something I have any attention of doing. I want to have done this. If I'm doing all this madness, I'm going full fucking throttle. I want to shoot for the craziest companies next year. I want to do push some more boundaries, get a couple more award nominations, box off the porn, finish off the OnlyFans. And settle down with a lovely husband. I'm just pretending no, I've done none of it. I'm praying he's never watched porn in his life. <laughs> what about kids? I, I wouldn't want to have children while I was still active in the industry. Because then, say if I'm finished, by the time it comes like 10 or 11, hopefully my type of porn will be so ancient, no one will know how to access it. Mm-hmm. Or if they do, it's, sex industry is so common now. Do you know what I mean? By the time I come to have kids, it's not going to be like, it's probably not going to be the only porn star mum at the school. There'll probably be about 20 OnlyFans and mums and five having normal jobs because so many girls do it now. Yeah. But it is, it is something to think about. And I think it's I think it's tough when you have kids in this industry and there's no denying that. And you can raise them to be as lovely as you want. And I know some of the best parents in this industry, better parents than... I know women in this industry are amazing mothers. And I know girls in Newcastle that do a hairdresser and are out sniffing every week and leaving the kids with the, the grandma where the porn mams are like with them they're putting the money into the kids future you know and it, it's sad that they get that judgement what's your longest relationship three years yeah, that's not bad yeah that's not bad how was that then how did he handle it he was a nutter the man was an absolute <laughs> nut job but he was younger than me it was lockdown oh so it wasn't too bad because I wasn't shooting a lot but I, he was unhinged yeah but you like that I know, but he was, he was too unhinged, you know, like even for me, I thought, oh, Jesus Christ, he's had me down for a breather from this. Because he, um, he was an athlete, but do you know what is in lockdown? So basically I broke it with, I was with an Instagram model, fitness model. He was a <coughs> twat, sorry, Lewis. <laughs> but um, broke up with him two weeks later, I started seeing this other guy and um, we were getting on well. Have a nice little Chinese in the hotel, nice little takeaway, getting, you know, I'd known him a long years. He used to PT me. Um, and he used to be a fan, actually. So now I go for your fans. And uh, 
boom, lockdown, this virus is happening. You know what it's like when it first come out? We're like, we're going to die. So I thought, fuck dying alone. I'll shock up with this young un. Um So I'm the best version I can be. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm sucking him off whenever he's seen me do live sex shows. He's just not sessioning, any training the garden, making the chicken. You're the best watching movies. I mean, so a good year and a half of that was just that fucking carry on. <laughs> then you get into the real world and, oh, my God, he was out Saturday in Tuesday. Absolute maniac. And then what happens is these men, well, not these men, not all men do that, but what happened is he started cheating and staying out. And if, if I'm with someone and they don't want me to shoot, I'm quite happy to put it on hold because I've done so much in my career. I could stop now and, and feel, if I met the love of my life and I wanted to be with him, I could be like, right, I'm willing to give up this side. You've either got to do content with me or if you're not happy to do content with me, you've still got to be happy with me doing solos and live interaction with my fans because that doesn't really damage my income that much, to be honest, if you're not doing boy girl because um, a lot of my income is interaction based. Um, so what happened though is he'd go out, go out, like I say, go out Saturday, come in Tuesday, not answering the phone, gaslighting, shagging other girls. What happens then is you're like, I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop doing what I do now for you because you, you're not showing me any respect. You're not the guy I thought you were. So then, after, I mean, I gave him a good six months of carrying on like a fucking nut job. Why did you accept that? Um, well, it's one of those things. You does it? Yeah, where's the proof? Prove it. Prove I was with her. She's fucking text me. He's the proof. She's lying. So you know, it, it's tricks like that on you. Then eventually, you've got to be like narcissistic stuff. Yeah, narcissistic. And so then, so I'm like, right, I'm going back to work. Let me sneak, um, taking the watch off. But, but then I had the fanny done, so you'd always know when the porno was. Anyway, oh, it's not bad happened with this latest ex. I got our phones together. I got um, both a phone and contract, not for any reason other than I'd just get it. He paid for it and everything it wasn't anything like that. But um, I, put, I set all the iClouds up and stuff. Now, I don't know what happened, right? <laughs> but at one point this year, I have linked our phones. You fucking meant that. I swear. You're lying, I, 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 I Listen, didn't, I didn't we were all just psychos as well, we, don't we? Were, no, we were long done at this point. But I was remember looking and I thought, I thought, this is strange. Like, there wasn't any bad blood there. And I remember looking and thinking, iPhone 2, iPhone 2, what's that? And I kind of looked at it and I thought, don't know, I'll dismiss that. Next thing I know, I'm getting sent a photo between me beside two six foot four men, arms like this. And he's like, been having a nice summer, have we? And I was like, fuck, to be fair, I managed to get it all off. He went, can you send me the scene? I enjoyed wanking over it. But at first I was like this. <gasps> and then, but I was getting all this over. And I was like, this is when we were together, April the 9th. Mm -hmm. God. So even though you, if you're doing porn and that, sleeping with other men, would you have an open relationship or is it just you can't sleep with anybody else? No, to be partner? honest with you, I'm quite jealous and territorial myself. I don't think I'd be comfortable. <laughs> Gotta think. It's the, people are going to be like, the irony of this bitch. Uh, uh, that's not something I'm comfortable with. And to be honest with you, if I'm into a guy, I don't have the desire to go out and sleep with other men. I don't really, that's not something that is a big thing for me. I mean, I'd be more open to that than them sleep with women, definitely. And maybe with the right person that, you know, really is into that and really wants to see me go and get shagged. I mean, when I'm with these men that, and, you know, they're getting in the moment and that, they're like, yeah, I want you to get fucked by loads of guys. Let's get lots of loads of guys. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, no, no. So that's what, like, they're into as well. But, um, yeah, that's creepy. If you love somebody, like you say, it's terrible. Yeah. You've got to protect them. Yeah, that. so I'm, I, you, I'm not into that. You, really. If they want you to get fucked off other guys, is that a turn on or a turn off for you? But are both? I'd prefer that than if they were like, oh, let's get a girl around. I'm like, no. Nah. Are you bisexual oh. yourself? No, I'm gay for pay. Do you know when I was, I'm not, but I say this because I would not date a woman. I never say never, but I don't see that in my future. Don't get me wrong, I like having threesomes with girls. Girls are pretty, girls are beautiful. And I've got some very horny friends. And you know, you can have a crease with your pals. Like my friend Rebecca, we went to Paris. We did some mad fucking stuff together this year. Um, we I managed to find a guy, this guy I met in Paris years ago. I used to see him a little bit. We remained good friends. And um, I was like, listen, do you want to come around and do some content? My pals are, yeah. He's like, yeah, can I bring a friend? I was like, why the fuck not? Bring some condoms because they're not tested. And he comes and his pal's like, uh, I own a sex club. I was like, wicked. Can you organise a little glory hole? I've never done one. Can we film it? 
No problem. Do you want a limo to pick you up? Yes. Can you get some men in it? Yes. How many do you want? Madness. Organised like three men in the limo. I come, was it four? No, three. So I have these guys in the limo. You do mad things like that. You go on these mad men are in these mad masks and that. So I do enjoy doing things like that with girls, but I don't really, I wouldn't see myself in bed with a woman just having a, having sex. But you never say never. Maybe I've not met the right woman. Yeah. What's uh, how do I you, love men. How do you prepare them. yourself for like anal scenes and that and DP? How do you prepare yourself? Got a nice little video I'll send you. It's a very educational one, actually. Yeah, send that. Put it on a YouTube <laughs> channel and educate everybody else. That. I put it on my Twitter. So basically, you've got to know your own body and like how everyone, you digest food, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to go too much in detail like that because let's not. Um, some girls will stop eating 24 hours before. Some girls stop eating 48 hours. For me personally, if I've got anal say on the 24th I'll just eat as normal on the 23rd have my tea about 8 o'clock 6 o'clock a bit early then I won't eat that day I'll have a banana before the scene for a bit of fuel or if I'm not sure what time it's going to start I'll eat jelly babies or gummy bears because they take a long time to digest um, and what you've got to do is you've got to use a douche so you can either dismantle your shower or you get it's like a bulb with a a f flute on the end I guess you fill it with water you stick up your bum you squirt the water in, you push the water out till it runs clear. Then, my personal suggestion would be like, find a nice lube that you like, sit with a butt plug in for a while. This is for an anal scene because you want no mess and you're preparing for fucking mega dicks, you know what I mean? You probably don't have to go to the extent of butt plugs in for hours for like the I've actually the had the water up there. I've done an ayahuasca documentary in Costa Rica <laughs> and they gave us... <laughs> A cooling cleanse. Oh, yeah. How was that? Yeah, that's the only reason I've done the ayahuasca documentary, <laughs> so I could get that. No, yeah, I know. You're was, saying that's was, what it was. No, it was fucking weird. It's for, a, for a man, it's weird. Yeah, I can that imagine. Was like, I don't know if it was like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, because they clean up. How long cleanse that? Yeah, they you clean you out, it. though. I was, I, 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 I think shit. I prolonged it. <laughs> they stay in there, but they fucking, they clean you out because when you take ayahuasca, you can shit yourself, they say. Yeah. I never shit yourself, be sick, all that stuff, because they say it's a... Have you heard of ayahuasca? I have. I've heard very mixed reviews. I've had some people lose the plot after it, and I've had some people have a very positive experience. For me personally, I don't think I would enjoy it. I'm not really into anything hallucinogenic or makes me... I'm, I think I'm a bit of a control freak. I like to be in control, yeah. yeah. How are you? Controlling or... Yeah, I, I was trying to control the journey. Yeah. I'm a control freak. I'm an overpower. I'm so now you feel relaxed yeah. and free. Would you recommend it or not? It felt like a cult. It felt very that, cult. Are, are, you, so are you vegan? I was vegan for two years yeah. and then I've noticed some of your bathroom back. stuff's like quite. Yeah, yeah. So. Not, not chemicals and stuff. Oh, no. I, I use all the no Natural. chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know, man. It felt culty for me. I'm not taking gear. I'm not drinking. I'm not gambling. Yeah. I'm on a good path. Like, I'm doing well. But. I'm always looking for more because I feel as if I should be happy. Yeah, drink, drink be. and drugs are, are so dangerous. I'm not, I'm not sober because I don't feel I have a problem with it. I would not go out. Don't get me wrong. I can be a maniac, but that's the other problem in this industry. It can if if you're doing drink and drugs and in this industry, it's not a good combination because you get you you can get money like that. You just you can damaged, escort, you can you? strip, you can do a scene, boom, yeah. couple of hundred, couple of grand, and then you can you can ruin your own life, really. Do you lose your? Do you think? Do you see a lot of people losing themselves, losing their soul, losing who they are? Yeah, I hundred percent. To be honest with you, I can think of a handful of people that should be in this industry, and I can think of a lot of people that shouldn't be in this industry. Yeah, because you you sound okay. You look good, man. Like yeah. other porn stars, I know they're fucking fried. Even I, I says that at Brooklyn, like she's very level headed. Yeah. She's, 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 she's very yeah. normal. I think the key is as well, you've got to have a normal life. Like, I still have normal sex. I still, when I'm at home... But what I, is normal sex to you? We're having sex with someone not on camera. Yeah. Although I would be like, work the camera off if you fancy it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, <and laughs> but it's, you know. it's sad, isn't it? Because a lot of porn stars, are, you can see they're broken. I feel as if they shouldn't be in the industry. Yeah. I feel as if... it, it, it can be a mind fuck. It yeah. really can be a mind fuck. And bear in mind sometimes essentially you're having sex with someone you don't want to have sex with necessarily so someone is entering your body for a girl it's, it's very invasive so if you're in a not in a privileged position like me where you can't choose you feel like you feel like you can't choose your sexual partner like i've i've kicked off quite a few times on set i'm not gonna lie i went and did um a scene in hungary fucking europe right europe's where all fucking goes i'm not gonna lie 
And then they sent me on the scene with this job. He was a young guy, good looking, Arabic guy. And he was a very big Snapchat follower. And he says, come round, we're doing an anal squirt scene. Not a problem. Smash. It was fucking great. His fans loved it. Did this. Do you know what that cheeky fucker said to me? All right, go get ready for the scene. Excuse me, you've had sex with me and put it on the internet. That is the scene. So I get, we, we get paid by scene. He was trying to do a day rate. Day rates where they like use you like a mule. What, just shagging you over and over and again to try and make as much money of you as possible and that. So I was like, are you fuck doing that? So then me and him having this big argument where the agent said a lot of the European girls will be quite meek. They'll just be like, oh, that's what's happening. That's what's going to do. They won't like kind of stand up for themselves. Uh-huh. So I was just like, fuck off, I'm not signing paperwork, I'm not quite prepared. But... So you basically kind of yeah. try to be intimidated? Because they won't, they won't want to say, they'll be intimidated or... How does it all work? Like, the, the, the porn now, it's all kind of, it's all kind of, all, all the big companies are now kind of... To create as well now. Yeah, it's different than that. When I started it, it was um, the era, the best era was like 80s, 90s, where you get like the Jenna Jameson, the really fit girls, you were getting absolute fortunes for porn movies because it was a relatively new thing mm-hmm. and you know these gorgeous women that can make money off it then it become oversaturated and they become a lot of free sight so then it took a hit then it was like the people coming into it were maybe desperate for money or on a strange path in life or not a lot of people choose the choose this job do you know what i mean it might find them or they might fall into it la di la di la um so then when i started it was um payment could be quite low for some people you know, some some guys were getting one fifty for a scene. They were there all day. Some girls were maybe only getting three hundred quid mm-hmm. for a boy girl scene. Now, even the girls that would be on a lower rate then, because you can choose your own rate, you know. Um, but now even they can be like, listen, I can make money off my OnlyFans. They've took control. They have to give you a decent rate now. Who offers the most money? Um, the most money are ones like Brazzers, Digital Playground, Black, Vixen. If you've got a good following and you've never done a scene, they'll pay you a good amount for it. Do you yeah. think that's just to get people Oh, oh legal, legal porn will pay you good. Legal porn have a terrible reputation. They're one of the best companies I've ever shot for because they do such hardcore fucking mad stuff. You go in, you're in your makeup for an hour, you do a quick 10 to 30 minute solo prepping yourself and then you do the fastest scene of your life. Because it's so hardcore, pay you straight away. No problems. Because it's so hardcore, people assume they're going to be like vultures or horrible to work for. So professional. Do you think a lot of the, is a lot of the directors okay to work with? There's a lot of creepy bastards. You, they see dick, and pussy, arsehole every day of their life. They don't care about yours. Do you know what I mean? There's only been one guy, <laughs> one French guy, but he was fit to be fair. So I did give him a hand job, won't lie. <laughs> There's only been one French guy that's kind of been like sticking his hand in, but he was sexy. So I was like, oh, fuck it, come here. Why are you doing a scene? <laughs> that's not normal, but is it? Hey, but I'll tell you what, it also happened with me surgeon. What happened? So I'm not going to name names because I'm not into ruining people's lives. But anyway, he's been struck off anyway because another girl grassed him up. So he's notorious for this, sending girls flames on Instagram and stuff. I had me boobs done. He's like... Right, come for your checkup. I didn't have a female chaperone at all, and apparently that's not even legal. Oh, by the way, I wasn't even this young when this happened. And he's like, um, your boobs need massaging to make sure they fit into the pockets. Doctor tells you that. You don't even think it's that abnormal. Maybe I've been in too many pornos. Mm. He's like, do you, mind, do you mind if I use coconut oil? So I was like, well, why not? Go on then. Later then, he's like, Starts touching himself. I knew he'd fancied me. There'd been a lot of dirty talk beforehand. And he'd be like, bet this isn't like one of your hospital scenes. So I did give me a discount as well. I got a half price boob job. It meant to be for an Instagram post, but it was definitely for this little wank on me tits. Anyway, he's massaging, touching himself. He went, do you mind? Wax his cock out. Spunks on me brand new tits. That's outrageous when you think about it. I mean, a lot of people aren't keen on that. That doesn't bother me because I actually found it quite funny. But a lot of people can be like... That is not okay. That's abuse. No, yeah, it's abuse. Whether, but whether you're yeah. entertaining it as well. He is. And if he's asking you and you're saying okay, then... So anyway, this other girl, karma gets you, doesn't it? This other girl, she's notorious for being a kiss and tell girl. Anyway, he'd been sending a dirty message and she sold a story to the papers on him. I mean, I definitely wouldn't go back to him again. Didn't like job in the boobs, though. Because they were, they were broken. One was ruptured and one was uh, stuck up here. So one, I, at one point, my boobs were like this. What's that with? This one ruptured, 
And this one had capsular contracture, I think it's called. It means the tissue hardens and sticks to it. So I had to get them fixed. So I didn't want boobs this big, they were smaller. But I didn't want the uplift scar because it goes like that, lollipop. So when you're doing porn, it's not ideal. So he's like, listen, just go for bigger boobs. It lifts them up um, and it'll fix the problem. So that doctor's getting end up, end up with abuse. I think he's struck off now because the girl sold a story and, should be. and got investigated. Then it turns out he's done it to loads of girls. But is he giving them a discount and they're letting them do it? Or is it just... Well, the dis no, the discount's for an Instagram post. But then obviously because he's giving you this, you're then feeling a bit like... Oh, he's done this. He's put the flames. You know this man fancies you, and that's why he's giving you discounts. Then you're feeling like yeah, that's okay. Yeah, but then, but, but then you're feeling like, well, that's okay. That's but, not okay. But if you're not, if you uh, definitely if you say okay. Well, yeah, I'm just, consented. I can't say the man's tip rate me. But did you, because do you think for because you've been through so much porn and done all that, that's you it. think it's well, normal? I didn't, you even, I didn't that? realize that wasn't normal. So my friends were like, "That's not okay." They went, "That would not happen to us." It's because of the industry you're in. Did you entertain it though? Oh yeah, of course I did. I was like, oh, all right then, go on. Because to me, a hand job on the tits isn't anything like, it's not like he was like, you know, savagely raping me. But then when you can look back on things now, actually, so I think now I've, I do feel quite strongly about men and coercive behaviour with sexual behaviour. One of my ex-boyfriends, he was like, come on, come on, come on. And then this was obviously since then, I'm like, this, this is illegal. What you're doing is you're trying to get me to consent. I do not want to have sex with you. So it wasn't until after I told my friends and stuff about that, I can then think of other situations where men have been like, they're pressured you into sex, but because I'm in the sex industry and you put yourself in positions where I'm not always horny when I go to a porno. I have to like get myself in the mood. I might take my wand or you, you slowly get into it as you're having sex. But because sometimes you're not at the beginning and you have sex, you normalise that type of thing. You normalise sometimes having sex when you don't really want to have sex. I think when you leave the sex industry, everyone should have to have therapy. I only need some therapy. I'm going to start this year. But that's a dangerous game then, isn't it? Not knowing Very. what's real fake. Yeah. But you Also, not what's moral, what's right, what's wrong. Is that okay? Feeling like you can be like, absolutely not. You cannot wank on my tits. Really do, you, right? do you feel yourself, you, you feel as if you've got damage through the years with the shit that you've done? 100%, definitely. I've, I have a lot of... Um, Repression, as it calls. Mm -hmm. So I'll repress a lot of things. But I have actually spoke to a therapist last year. And I'm definitely going to go ahead with that this year. But I know there's going to be a few things. My friend Rebecca, she deals with a therapist. I know there's going to be a few things that need addressing. What I'm, and maybe I want to be able to have the time to dedicate to that. And I might be like, yeah, this is going to interfere with work for a little bit. Is that why you're scared to do it in case you change career paths? Oh, yeah, I might, have, I might end up having a mental break, so I'm thinking, what if I do help me? Are you scared, no, I, Are you scared I, to kind of open that box? Yeah, it, it's going to be, because you might think, Jesus Christ, some of the stuff's been a bit mad. Not necessarily with porn, I think with other things about maybe like certain relationships you've allowed to happen or maybe experiences like that, not the actual porn itself. I think when you deal with that, like any person that has to deal with trauma or every person in this world has got trauma. There's not a single yeah, person that I doesn't agree. need a therapist, is there not? But you know yourself, because it's such a, a sensitive job, it could be a very bumpy road. I'm scared though, you're trying, like you say, put all the feelings in a box because you're scared of knowing who you are. Do you ever feel... I wouldn't say ashamed, but do you ever, even though you're out there and you're promoting it and that, you love it, but do you ever feel it deep inside that? hundred hundred percent. Sometimes you think, I could have done anything in this world. I chose a job that makes it hard to have relationships. It comes with stigma. It comes with prejudice. And it comes with a lot of like physical exhaustion. So, of course, anyone that says they don't question it and they love this job every day of their life is absolutely lying because I don't feel like many people feel like that about a lot of the jobs. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I don't regret it either. But what I will say about porn is when I was younger, I think I had a low self-esteem and low confidence. And what this industry has done for me is actually it built me more confident and more self-esteem. And now even though, like I, have, I said about the 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 dead porno mm -hmm. and the plastic surgeon guy, now I'll probably, now those things I wouldn't put up with. Do you know what I mean? Because I've grown you grow so much as a person and you kind of learn to stand up for yourself. I used to be a lot more submissive, a bit more, I wouldn't say I'm like dominant, I'm not like a dominatrix, but now I can stand my ground. Yeah, you've got to def defend your yeah. ground. And but you've got to because no one else will. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're a porn star, then in people's minds, you're an easy target. Yeah. But if you if you show yourself respect, like I think some of the men I slept with when I was younger, James, I think you shouldn't have slept with him. 
Like, why did you sleep with him? But even I asked about him, no, I was just young and horny and mad. You don't kind of realise your own self-respect and self-worth. And that's nothing to do with porn. These are when I was in college. But you're sort of like seeking validation and attention seeking because of maybe like underlying childhood yeah. issues or something. It's all to do with, isn't it? But now, now there's plenty of guys in the DMs of blue ticks that think they're special because, you know, they've been bloody verified by Instagram or they play football. And I'm like, nah, what am I shagging you for? So I can be your porn trophy. How much does the, the dad being there, not being there, do you think that plays a effect? Well, I mean, it's got to be a major one, hasn't it? I'm not, not completely... What do you think slow. that connection is, man? I don't know. It's strange, isn't it? It's got to be something to do with biology, I think. and Or is it? Or is it like what we've been taught? That is crazy. I like, don't know. You tend to see the, the got, usual not, suspects as that. Like the daddy issues. issues. We've got daddy issues. We've all got them. But, but why? Is it is that something we're learnt by society or is that in our brains, how we're wired? I don't know myself. I'd love to find out, to be honest with you, why it affects you in such a way. But the, the stats are that single parents, your kid is more likely to become an addict, be in prison, yeah. do porn. I would not like my kid to be in the sex industry. Why? It's difficult. Um, I, like I say, I, I feel even my experiences, even though you say I seem switched on and I don't seem too damaged, I still have had a negative experiences myself. And also it's it's hard. It is a hard job. And it's not something that like, there's, there's so much more you can do. But if they did want to do it, I would obviously be able to have, offer them advice and say where to go with it. But yeah, it, it's, it's tough. It's very tough. It's very mentally tough. It's very, it's just mad. Why do you do that? Well, I made a decision when I'm younger and I've committed to that decision. I enjoy it. I make good money from it. And I feel like this is a personal decision for me, but I don't feel like it's an everybody job. Do you think if you could make a decision again as a kid, you would make the same decision? Do you know what it is? Even if I didn't do it when I was a kid, I'd have ended up doing OnlyFans now. I feel like... Have you, seen, bad, have you Have you seen um, Sliding Doors? No. With Buddha Paltrow? Oh. It's a really good film, actually. You should watch it. But it's about this woman's story and the certain things that were destined to happen in her life. Mm -hmm. Like she has a miscarriage in both of them. She meets the same guy, but in different times. And it's about the concept, like life, the journey you're on, certain things are always going to happen in your life, no matter what at what period. Synchronous, yeah. Yeah, watch it. It's good. It's a good film. Yeah, well, I like what it. What about sexual energy exchange? See, this is a big thing that people say. I've personally not thought too much into this. Some people, I think, are really... Do you think you're guarded, though? Do you think you've guarded yourself not if think... Yeah, so I, I, I think I can deflect their sexual energy. I, I don't know, is that a thing? Possibly, it, yes, because they say it. when you sleep with somebody, you, you take on yeah. all their trauma, all their bullshit, like you'd imagine. Look, when I do podcasts, I can feel drained. Yeah. Never mind getting fucked off four guys, ten guys. Like, how did you... How did See, you... I, I, I don't feel like that. I feel like if I do a porno, I feel light. I feel happy. I feel a sense well, of achievement. If it's thing, good, yeah. As long as in your mind, I think it's okay. I think what can you're about it more is when girls do escorting. That can be more so because there's a big difference between these two things. Porn is performing. It's for the camera. It's for someone else. Both are equal parties. Escorting, you are serving. It's for the man. The man you're with. You're his. Their to make him happy so they're very different so girls that do a lot of this escorting I've noticed they have a lot more of this experience what you speak about the sexual energy when you're doing it with a porn performer bear in mind they're taking your energy mm -hmm. so if you're both in a good state you're both professional you're both happy to be there like if I work with Danny Danny's got a great energy when you meet him if I've got a great thing it's just Good energy all around, you know what I mean? It's mad to see Dan, and you would never think he was a fucking massive porn star, man. You just he's think daft just, as uh, a brush, man. Yeah, you're on yeah. set with him, he's just being a joke, sir. Mm -hmm. And then, then you randomly go off sex, then you're back to normal. What age did you lose your virginity? Um, 15 and a half. Yes. Yeah, I'm putting the half in there, so yeah, I'm just yeah, that's not. That's <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? Fuck kid, yeah. It's fucking oh, how old were you? 13. Young. Men do it a lot younger. Yeah. Men have, men have problems, I think. With porn, pornography is very easy accessible. Porn, when isn't I was it? growing up, it was like the 10 minute preview, 12 at night. But, but do you know when you were watching porn, mm -hmm. can I ask how long you'd watch it for? Five minutes. That's what I mean. That makes us do fucking 45 minute long scenes. Chop it. No, that was bang. But, 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 but were, you a, were you a skipper? <laughs> yeah, that is. I was a good looking bastard anyway, so I never really. Yeah, I needed you that, you know Have I mean? you slept with yeah. a lot of women? Are you celibate now, can I ask? That is it. Well, yeah, kind of. On a path, man. I'm on a good path. So one of my friends, she's um, she's a sex and love addict, and she's like, you're potentially a sex addict as well because I'm not going to lie to you. 
you've got to think I'm mental I say this I can manifest some very good good men that I want to sleep with mm -hmm. so I'll say like there's certain guys there's been at least a couple of guys that I thought they live nowhere near me seem very unobtainable and I see I sometimes see guys as trophies I'll want to sleep with that person I like I don't know I'll see them as like a goal this isn't my personal life um, and then when, I, when I've done it I'll be like right Okay, I feel happy and satisfied with that. So she's like, yeah, you, you could potentially be a sex addict. But anyway, back to my original point, because she's a sex and love addict, she said when she comes to deal with that, this is the other reason for the therapy, she's going to have to be celibate for a certain amount of time mm -hmm. so she can address those issues because you can't, like an alcoholic can't drink and be in recovery, I don't think. Yeah. I don't really want to speak too much on that because I don't have experience, mm -hmm. but that's what she's saying. Definitely so that's bit. another reason for the therapy for me. I'm thinking... I can't stop having sex and deal with these issues. But it's cleansing. It's facing your problems and demons. If you're in a good place, if you put yeah. your hand in your hand and say, you know what, I'm happy. Yeah. Life is amazing. And so be, be, yeah. who, be who you want to be. Uh, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'll have a break. So I have them time to time, especially being a woman. You have the yeah. times of the month and you're like, Bruh. What are you like with rejection? I don't think I put myself in a position where I can get rejected. But that's the controlling nature. Yeah. Where you know you're going yeah. to win. Yeah. So I don't put myself in. Could you give me an example? If you try to put it on somebody that says no, or you try to go for a job, you get, re nah, you're not good enough. Like, Something like being rejected, but... So, rejection in... If I get rejected for a job, there'll, there'll be a reason. So it'll be like, I want one company couldn't shoot me because I had too much lip filler or thingy. That is what it is. I'm not too bothered about that. That's their niche. I'm quite good at understanding the business. Do you know what I mean? They're not saying you're a horrible person. We hate you. It's... I don't fit their look. That's fine. So I know where to go with. I don't get rejected for a lot of things because, you know, no tattoos, you know, they can make me look, they can make me look a whore, they can make me look a virgin, they can make me look, even though I've got boobs, they're still fairly natural. Um, I wouldn't really put myself in a position with a man where I thought I was going to get rejected. But being a porn star, a lot of guys, but you know, sometimes guys just want to shag you, not even with fancy, because they just think, oh, I'll just tick that off the list. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's more thing than anything. Yeah. I'm sure I've slept with men that don't fancy me in the slightest, but they think, uh, oh, she's a porn star, I'll shag her. Do you think it's too easy now for people? Yes. Especially with social media. Mm. I think that's but why people, people are so confused, man. There's not much rejection now because people just fuck. They don't care. Yeah. They don't even care who they're fucking. But it's unhealthy. Yeah, it's very unhealthy. Like I say, I don't know if you should be with the one person your whole life or have four wives or whatever the fuck It's it lovely is. though, isn't it? When you meet someone, you have a connection and you just want to spend time together. And before, I love the beginning of a relationship before you've fucked each other up and you've done all these bad things and you're getting on and the call and you're like answering the call and you're not calling them thinking. Have you seen that TikTok where it's like the Bruno Mars song? Why do you think it goes toxic and miss so many just relationships? Think Everyone's got so many issues and no, not many people deal with them, do they? When do you think you'll go and see a therapist and deal with and face I'm going to go this month. I'm going to start a little bit of therapy. Um, I'm going with my friend's mum, actually. So we spoke about it before Christmas, but I feel like when you make a decision like that, I think you've got to have time to digest it because you know it's going to be a step. I'm not going to do a lot of intense stuff. I'm going to go and just... My thing is, I don't want to be sat there and it'd be awkward and then be like... Tell me about your childhood. Tell me about, like, you know when you see them in the movies mm -hmm. and it feels, also a therapy, I feel like it feels so long-winded. It's a constant thing, isn't it? Are you going to go and see a woman or a man? A woman. I think that'd be best. Imagine yes. sitting with a man and he starts fucking rubbing oh, your tits. God. And you're just lying. <laughs> that would happen, you know, that would happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're just thinking it's normal. Have you seen um, Jonah Hill and this therapist did a thing on Netflix? Have you watched that? Yeah, he was what good that think? Yeah, it was a bit dark, man, but... He, he had a nice little vibe about yeah, him, this like therapist. It's everything to do with energy. I went to see a therapist uh, five times last year and I just didn't like the guy I felt he looked dead grey he looked dead old and I thought that's the only how, issue how can isn't I be it? taking advice with somebody that looks fucking terrible it may, he might have the keys to certain things but I'm in a great place I've worked yeah. for relentless to make changes obviously I've still got it's a mind feel up I could be in a great mood and all of a sudden you shouldn't be happy that kid there's a negative thought and I'm not that Thoughts, bad. intrusive thoughts are a problem, aren't they? Yeah. Sometimes I can be like, I'm a very hyper person, so I'll be like, you know, very hyper, 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 and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden my mood can change quite quickly, and I'll be like, right, sometimes I won't actually know what's affected my mood. I'm like, something's pissed me off. I don't know what's pissed me off, and I have to really think about, and sometimes it'll just be a daft thought that's like nothing. I couldn't even think of an example, but it's just like mm -hmm. learning to control your own thoughts and thinking you're not your thoughts as well, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're bipolar? I don't think I'm bipolar because I don't have any, any episodes of depression. Mm -hmm. Maybe ADHD or something along those lines or a bit manic. Why do you think your relationships don't last? Um, 
because of your nature of work. The last two fucking long. Three years. I should have finished after a year. <laughs> but if you're trying, to, you're not trying to get married to have kids. Listen, my type at the minute, I 100% could not marry my type and I would not have a child with a man that I go for at the minute. It would be brought to a very toxic environment. The last thing I'd want for my child would be, I'm going to have an for us next year. This yeah. year, sorry, 2023. How old um, are you? I'm going to be 32 in May. Why are you, why are you so young though? Because the, the younger you get the egg, eggs froze, the better, because the the better eggs. Actually, after a woman's 28, your eggs start going downhill. Mm -hmm. So if I get them froze this year, it gives me 10 years, you know, sort myself out, get a therapy, find a nice man or go through IVF. But you're not going to find one unless you start making the changes. Exactly. But if I have a freeze my eggs, it buys me time, so I have those changes. But you're just buying yourself time so you can just stay in the life of madness. I can't do a quick free uh, therapy rush and find us in that time. I don't want to go to therapy. <laughs> Might be a reality TV show. Yeah. Go and get therapy and find your love of your life. I was actually speaking to <laughs> uh, Brooklyn, man, that was reality porn reality TV show. I think would be class, man. Yeah. Be bonkers. He's She's got husband. I think he's lovely. Yeah, probably. I've never met just, him. That's what I said. You know, because men get jealous as me. You get jealous. Of your, I'm a protector, man. Like yeah. family. Like I'm, I'm there. Like, but. She no, says she doesn't shoot an awful lot though, Brooklyn. She's not out having sex with a lot no, of men the all the time, is she? Doing their, no, they're just doing their thing. Yeah. They're faithful. They'll, they'll do their thing. In Maybe I should get the therapy and find a nice husband. I, 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 I'm not into porn, man. Not the slightest. I wouldn't like to date a guy in my industry, if I'm Why? honest with you. Um, if I'm honest with you, I think this is no offence to the men in this industry. Just, even though when you say something like that, it usually means you're being offensive, which is ironic. I think they've got ego issues. I think they like the ego strokes. I think that's why they do porn. Yeah, so, but it's uh, probably the same as the women as well. You can yeah, yeah, but imagine two... Clashing. Yeah, we like attention. I like attention. That's why I do porn. That's another reason as well. You like the attention you get from it. What's the worst things you've experienced in it, in the porn industry? Because like you say, there's a good side, but there's also a dark side. STI, not very even too, too traumatic, but obviously that's never pleasant. We get tests every month, so you get it quite fast, but that, that jab in the bum isn't the best. Um, honestly, I've not, the, thing, the things I've mentioned, the guy who tried to pay, pay him, try and get two scenes out of me, I, I've not had a lot of traumatic experiences. Why do you think a lot of other girls... More, more of it is that bloody mental doctor. Why do you think a lot of other girls go through a lot of trauma with it? Because the amateur scene just agreeing to everything. Um, amateur scene is a big thing. Do you know, I did a lot of research. I did seven months of research before I got into this industry. I, I was on YouTube. I was on websites. I read a negative book about a girl that had things. I, I really looked into what I was getting into to try and give myself the best possible ex experience I could do. I wanted to, to be sure that this is a path I wanted to go in. And, and even now... I, it wasn't the right decision. I think in the end, I think it ends up okay, doesn't it? Do you ever feel Hopefully. used? No, I don't. I, I felt more used of non porn men. How so? I don't know. Say so if you have a... Is that because when, when you're younger, you have sex with... You, you might have sex with guys because, you know, like you say, validation, attention-seeking, daddy issues. Realistically, did I maybe want to have sex with all those men? Probably not. Were you doing it for some sort of internal validation or esteem? Most likely. When am I in porn or being used? No, we've got a very consensual agreement. Everyone's everyone's happy. Everyone's getting paid. I've never ever felt used on a porn set. See, when I do a podcast, I think, ah, oh, yeah, that was a great podcast. Do you walk away and feel great fucking sick? That was a great scene. Yeah, but, hi, it's an adrenaline rush. How do you know it's a good scene? You just know the energy's non stop. I'll I tell you some of those. I've seen. I've done some scenes that are absolute fucking heap of shit, and they've come out looking all right. I thought. There's nothing worse than bad things. You just think, fuck, that's going to be out there. The energy's off. The guy's woods up and down. There was a fallout one time. Me and a, not a fallout, but we were doing a DP scene. And the guy said to me, do you mind giving us a bit of a blow job? And I was like, listen, I can't. Because the two of you, I can't be pinging back and forth. Blow job news before the scene. My energy will go. It's a DP scene. I want to be strong. <sighs> Flopped. Wait an hour for him to get wood because his ego is dented. But it wasn't personal, do you know what I mean? Um, if, if it's just a couple of us, not just me and a man even, sorry, of course I'll give him a little hand job, a little blow job. I've got no palms with that. I'm, I'm happy with them if I fancy them. And that's, you know, as long as it's not for fucking hours. No palms um, about that. A little bit of a fluff. Why the devil not? Um, but yes, yeah, so sometimes things can like that can be a little bit, a little bit awkward. It's mad, isn't it, but... That is fucking nuts, like. Oh, fucking hell, I'll be going back and forth between. Imagine the state I'd look. Then you'd be, but then you'd have to get makeup touch up. <laughs> then he'd be down again. A man's job is to get to set, get hard and come on demand. I know the guys get the injections and take the tablets and that. Does girls take anything? I fucking love guys that inject. I shouldn't say that, but I do. Why? 
Because there's a taboo against it that men shouldn't do it because it can affect the sexual ability because they get they end up reliant on it. Mm -hmm. But I know it as a performer because they stay hard and they can come whenever. Women now we just use lube, lube sure. and mental simulation. I like to use my wand and do an anal because it. What is the like, wand? The wand. It looks like this. Never seen them. Don't you be fucking doing anything, Dan? Taking this in the handbag. <laughs> what about uh, you talk about gay fuck? Be my big pal, uh, Dan. Dan, big Dan. Uh, Dan McGriffin. Yeah. I smoked him the other day. He's like, you want to come do a scene? I live in London now. I'm like, all right. He texts me a friend saying, want to fuck him as well? It's mad, isn't it? He's, uh, he does the, the gay stuff, man, and he's straight. Like, I still struggle with it, but he's a fucking bear. I, I, I struggle with it. Bear I, world, world champion, and he's just a good guy. I like him, man. He's just a, 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 just a good big For instance, big I know you couldn't go have sex with a man, could yeah, you? I couldn't. I find that. Why would that? I, 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 I do, never met a guy that do gay porn and I just go and do normal and get paid for it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that would be my method. Yeah, gay get a lot more though. Gay is a dirty Do they get paid there. paid the most? Men, men, men are the main consumers. So to have a good straight following, you've got to be like a Johnny Sins, a Jason Love. You know, you've got to be superstar level mm -hmm. to get a lot of money from things like that. Danny D. You're still going to have, all the men will still have a lot of gay following because that's that's what guys going to see. So these average men that haven't yet, Earn their stripes are going to struggle to have a big straight fan base because they'll just go to the girls' site. Say me and Dan go do a scene together, all the straight fans will come to me because mm -hmm. sure. it makes sense. That's a guy's struggle. I feel for guys sometimes. Do you think you're going to struggle to get out? Me? Yeah. No, absolutely not. When are you going to get out then? I am thinking about this day and I, I know, do you know what it is? I've absolutely got. I've worked so hard in my career. I've got two AVN nominations. I've got for foreign female of the year twice. I've got experts for DP scene. Funnily enough, I've got a lesbian scene nomination. Um, I've done my IMB DP, just massive. You get 10 letter recommendations of people in the industry. I have got everything boxed off. If they turn me down, then no one's getting in. What does that get you? Just more money for scenes? I want some ex American exposure. I want to work for like Jules Jordan, if you're him. Mm -hmm. Evil Angel. I want to do Blacks. I want to, I've committed to this career. I want to finish it on a high. I want to do those nice oiled up scenes and the sexy bikinis and work with certain people. Then I want to do some OnlyFans collabs. And then I'll feel like it's a full circle then. Do you know what I mean? Feels like you've completed that. Yeah. What's the difference with pay and porn from the UK to America? Is it? night and day big difference it's not that different to be honest with you um, it's it all dependent on the performer themselves you set your own rate people can they might say yeah they might say fuck off you might put it too high you might be like no UK and Europe will push girls for a lower rate because there's not really agents there's a few in Europe but um, to be honest with you the UK porn industry is always desperate for newcomers you, you don't have to work for peanuts but, but some people have. Some people have been massively underpaid. Have you seen people come, do one scene, two scenes, then never come back? Oh, yeah. There's been some gorgeous people. I always think of the years, I think, well, what's happened to them? It's, it's been sad. There's, there was a gorgeous Canadian girl, all the same. She killed herself. She was so successful. So sad. Have you ever been that low? No. No. Have you seen a lot of other girls and men struggle with it? You know what? You don't know, do you? They probably have. I, I'm, I know some people that have been, have been really sad. Don't get me wrong. The other day, I'm having a breakdown. I was like, I'm not done with this. I'm sick of this fucking work. On OnlyFans, because people don't realise the amount of fucking work that goes into OnlyFans. The moment you fucking open your eyes, I'm a night owl, me. So do you know between 12am and 4am, I love that time zone. I don't know why. I feel like the world's peaceful. I write in my diary then, I read my books and watch Silent Witness or something. Do you want to just be like a proper normal person in those hours? Mm -hmm. But the moment you wake up, OnlyFans is very different. I would say it's 30% content, 70% advertising, branding, business. James, I've never had to be organised in my life. I've had to show up set, do a job. I didn't know Google Tasks existed. Do you know what Google Tasks is? No. Google Meet and Zoom or something. All these... Bluetooth fucking printers. I didn't know any of this mad stuff existed. I'm like, what the hell? Technology's amazing. Look how far we've come. <laughs> never with with Google Calendar. I've never had to do anything like that. I just write it down. And it's so much to go into it. Advertising. I'm always buying girls' guides on OnlyFans, paying them to learn their, take their knowledge from things, you know, paying people for promo. You've got to be on that shit so much. It's such a like, crazy fast world that it's nothing like porn at all what sort of stuff's on your OnlyFans is it hardcore is it just 
I do everything from like solos to hardcore, yeah. All systems go, baby. And it doesn't matter who the price is, whoever pays for the monthly fee, they they still get everything. That you I get have um, two pages. I've got a free page and then not much is shown on the timeline, just some sexy pics um, and everything's pay-per-view. <laughs> and then I've got a, a paid page where everything is still pay-per-view too, but it's also a bit cheaper. Cheaper pay-per-view. What's your, your OnlyFans? What's your old social media links in that? Um, Twitter is a day in Siena. Instagram is another day in Siena. Um, basically, all a day in Siena. That was that's my original, but my Instagram is another day because the day in Siena got kicked off. What's your dream scene? What's your dream? What's my dream scene? I think I don't know. It's a good question. I really want to do. I really want to do some Jules Jordan stuff. I love it. The oiled up, the bright bikinis, the really light background, the really hardcore Gonzo drilling. What about the creepy, creepy bastard? Who was a creepy cunt who had the black hair and the black goatee? Like a big, massive fucking dodger. Like the guy in America, I just got the jail there. <laughs> oh, so much fun. He was a creepy bastard. Like he had the, the black moustache, like the black shade of hair, but he was an older man. But he's Ron like, Jeremy. Yeah. Dirty bastard. Yeah. He was horrible, wasn't he? But, I mean, he's a predator. I never had to work with him. But it just shows you. Do you know what I mean? There were people that wanted to work with him. Right. He's like the fucking American Jimmy Savile him. Like he was. He is he not just, my. He's not my life. Where I'm thinking. I like. I like guys in shape. But he, big just, guys. But he just looks creepy. I don't. I don't know who wants to work with him. That's going to be a lie. That's propaganda. That I don't fucking want to work with him. He wants to be lying. Do you get? Have you ever had that in the industry? Somebody being exposed has been a right fucking wronging. <laughs> There's someone at the minute undergoing rape allegations and there's been some photos. I'm not going to say who because there's nothing to get proved. I've worked with him. I had a present experience with him. It's not to say these girls ain't lying because the video that was took looks like it was rape, but you don't know if that was role play. You don't know if it wasn't. It doesn't look good. You get cancelled. You do get cancelled for stuff like that. James Dean got some, some backlash. I worked with James Dean. Perfect gentleman, but doesn't mean it doesn't happen. You can't. It's really difficult in that position when you've worked with someone. It's like me having this chat with you now, and then someone telling me you rate them. It's it's a difficult thing to comprehend. But you've got to try and. If you say nothing, you're a bad person. You're with the rapist. If you say something, you could be ruining someone's career. That someone's cried wolf. Because what do you do in that instance? Yeah. I try and say Switzerland neutral. What about your trust issues? Do you, how do you trust? Can you trust? Bloody hell, can I? am hacker.com with me fucking... But you see the, the way the people ask you questions is how creepy men are. Like, men are fucking Yeah, I've got a lot well. of trust issues, I think. But that's that's from personal relationships and, you know, just dealing with a lot of compulsive liars. But then also, they, they can make you become a little bit of a liar yourself because you might be scared to, like, say something or say if you go have the girls and you have an artist and you don't want to stay out there too long... Oh, I'm going for food. Really going for a fucking boozy brunch. Would you see yourself? Would you call yourself gullible? I can be a little bit naive. Yes, definitely. Is that, that an act? N naive? No, no, not an act. Definitely not. In some ways, I can be very switched on, and I can be very quick, and I can be very clever, and I can I can get people. Yeah. See, I get that you're switched on, but also get that. Yeah, sometimes you're that naive either. So I don't sometimes know if you're I have a then. level of um, I like to see the good in people. That that that's yeah. my problem because I. Because I'm quite like a bubbly, upbeat person, I generally get quite an, a good reception from people, which I think can make me not have a, a true understanding of what they're like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm like, yay. Mm -hmm. But that's life, isn't it? Like, yeah. So then maybe I'll meet someone and have a good experience. I think they're sound as fuck, but then really they're a fucking why? demon. Because, yeah, I had a woman on just before you uh, today, Sarah no, back to back, Sarah it? Sands. Um, she killed her son's abuser 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 he old man 77 so he's just that's outside just the shop deserted, just an old man though, I'd struggle. and then from this is from, from 1970 he's been doing it for 40 years changed his name and he was just sitting outside the shop and just a predator everybody thought it was nice used to bring him food used to invite him in the house and uh, she abused her sons and she went round to get a to confess and you wouldn't confess and she fucking done him but stabbed him I eight just times don't get, do you know what I've realised though I'll tell you what have you seen the film Training Day Denzel Denzel Washington. Washington. Yeah. That man in that film, this is what he is an innate, innately, is that the word? Innately bad person, evil. That person you've just described, that abuser, they've got to be that, haven't they? Mm -hmm. To do that to someone, to. I think there's. 
I think there's levels, right? Yeah, and energies and people. And I think some, this is going to sound mental, right? I think there's like a certain thing in certain people. I can't describe what it is. Maybe it's energy, maybe it's aura, maybe it's like a little, imagine like a chip. I think some people have that. And I think they're so dark and evil that, but, but the psychopaths, the sociopaths, and they can mm. be so charming because I, I couldn't do that. I couldn't abuse someone. I couldn't even kick a dog. Even, I don't even think I could kill someone that did something to me. Yeah, like I, I, would, I would struggle to actually like stab someone, I think. You'll tend to see all those serial killers. They're all nice. They all come in sharp, very well dressed, oh, very well spoken. I'm saying this. Do you know what I mean? That door's <laughs> locked. You're fucked. I'm like, <laughs> do you know what? Sometimes you will. Yeah. I get mad. So me and my friend went thought we were going to go stargazing last night. What a fucking disaster that was. Well, I've got stargazing, New Year, New Year's. Um, went to Winyard there. What's it called? A planetarium? Yeah. I didn't realise. Didn't check open times. Shock. Mm -hmm. So we go up there. I went... Laura, it's pretty fucking dark here. Like, obviously, you need to be able to see the stars. And I'm like really scared of the dark. And I am a bit paranoid. I'm very paranoid. I always think someone's trying to murder me. Never happened yet, such wood. And um, yeah, she just gets out and starts strolling around. It's fucking pitch black out there. And I'm thinking someone is going to kill us. Anyway, this 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 is nine o'clock. No one's around. And this, this van pulls up. I'm like, this is it. We're going to die. <laughs> We're going to die. All these prayers, this manifestation. This work's been for nothing. I'm getting butchered at Winyard. It was just the community guard saying he's going to close the park up. But yeah. Why but, are you so scared of that? But yet you're going to have a room full of six guys with a dick out and just do your thing. That's it. I don't know why I'm scared. I can really scared of that. You're scared of dark. Not what are you scared of? Heights. Heights, yeah. yeah. I get vertical if I'm really high. Do you yeah. know what I'm supposed to be No. It's like the um, borough or something. I might even not be calling it the right name. I can't even get to the top of that because my legs go jig jiggly. Yeah, I'm still going on roller coaster and I'll try and force myself yeah, because I, like I think that. that people are there watching me. So I'll show them I'm a man. Yeah, but I'm like heights, man. I'm kind of fearless. Yeah, I've seen you the other day. You were up some fucking mountain. Yeah. How would you get up there? Just doing all the cold water stuff in that, don't Tell you, have you seen, um, is it called The Alpinist? Don't know. Oh, watch this on Prime. It's quite a sad story. It's about this young kid. He did that. What's it called? Rock climbing. Yeah, but with just fucking claws. It's I don't know what it's hands. called. Um, and he, he, he free scaled, whatever it's called. I don't know the correct terms. Oh my God, such an amazing journey. But it's really sad. I'm trying to turn the end for a bit. You can probably guess what happens. Yeah, it um, I'm going to send you. Fuck's sake. All right, Don't need to watch that, people. So, <laughs> so finishing you know up. What's good about his journey? You watch tell it. me plans for the future. Have you seen changes? Are you going to make therapists? Are you going to see the world a bit different? Or are you just going to stick to it? Got Dublin. <laughs> That's where you could find the magic. Yeah, what we're going to do different, more porn. I've had, about, well, I've had a couple of years off, haven't I? We've had COVID and then I only went back and did brasses and stuff. Um, yeah, just more. I look a bit better now. I've had my teeth done. Boobs are not wonky no more. New pussy. I've got to sample that on the internet. Get that shown off. What's that, man? New okay. vagina, new porn. Exactly. Then I'll be joining you. I'll be celibate. I'll be like, they're all fucking demons, James. Get rid of them. in water, the good stuff. <laughs> I like that, you know, when I was in Mexico, it was gorgeous. We did um, bodyboarding. Mm -hmm. Thinking myself an ear infection off from too much water in it because obviously it was hopeless at first. Oh, but it's lush being like with nature, nature and the sea yeah. and the sand. That's a piece in it. It's hard yeah, it's no, when you're in here, if you're stuck on OnlyFans, you're doing porn, if I'm doing, it's constant on the move. It's lovely in here for a guy. You've got a cheeky salt lamp going on, a bit of them called incense sticks, those yeah. things. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Nice energy. Yeah, it's all about the energy in it. So I'll, I'm all about that, but it doesn't mean your life's fucking great, does it? Yeah. Because it's still fucking. Haywire up here, but I'm getting an insert signal trying to prove man. the house. Exactly. I can't stage my place because apparently you do that to get rid of demons and bad energy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I live there with my ex, it needs absolutely need burning to the ground, to be fair. But, um, because it's saying it just sticks to the walls. Yeah, but I can't, uh, I can't open windows. It's a floor. I've got to go there, con. So there's no point. No, you went by fucking have, setting the fire alarms I've got to move house. Bad bastard. <laughs> For anybody watching, it's maybe going through the madness and life of struggles. Like, what advice would you have for them? Just keep going. I know, do you know what? I watched a really sad thing with Kurt Norcross on Dapper. TikTok. Yeah, it was on my favorite oh, podcast. It's sad, isn't it? But yeah. do you know what? He was so encouraging. I think just follow people like that who've had that experience and nothing lasts forever, no matter how bad or awful or place you're in. Even if all you do is literally wake up, eat, 
sleep until something passes your mindset. So just just keep going. But it's, it's easier said than done, isn't it? Yeah. Get the help you need. See, no, get the uh, therapy. Uh, just what would you say? Fucking take your own advice and get your own therapy. I just say, go with nature, man. Look. Nature. Anything, anything that you're feeling sad about, dogs. Trying to, get with dogs. Yeah, that's your logic. Try and eliminate yeah. the bad things in life, the things that you're doing with that. Drugs, even, drugs, even sex. Is it? Listen, Drink no matter drugs, what you dogs, say, porn or not, it's still negative mm. if it's not used in a positive. I way. think you go back to basics, isn't it? Just yeah. live a, a a a pure life. Get outside, eat, mm -hmm. exercise, spend time with animals. Do people that don't like animals are a bit weird? Do you one of those people? Yeah, no, I've got a dog in the room. Uh, oh. Yeah. Can't wait to see. Yeah, yeah, mad bastard. Uh, yeah, would you like to finish up on anything else, my dear? Not really. Sienna, it's been an absolute fucking pleasure. Thank you. Hope you stay good. Hope you get the fairy paint. Hopefully, next time you're on here, you'll be yeah. fucking new woman. New woman, you uh, me. Take care, <laughs> Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.